Hey guys, it's Matt Pittman, the CEO and pitmaster at Meat Church Barbecue. Well, welcome back to my outdoor kitchen here in Waxahachie, Texas. Today, we're gonna make something you guys have been asking me for since September of last year, Mexican pulled pork. So last September, we had a pop-up class at Meat Church Barbecue Supply uh, when we launched our pellets. And I did something that a friend of mine calls a Mexican pork butt. I'm going to give you the history of that. But it went over such a huge success. And all the people on our Facebook Meat Church Congregation page have just been saying, make a video, make a video. And so this has been on our list for a while. We had a lot of holiday stuff we had to do. But now it's time. So let's jump right into this. So what do we have here? This is about a 10-pound pork butt. It's bone in. It's prairie fresh, so it's going to be amazing pork. We're not going to do a whole lot to it because this is going to ultimately be pulled pork. So anything I trim off is something that I can't eat. Um, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and take a boning knife and just trim off kind of the little pieces hanging off because that'll, that'll just burn up kind of into a crisp ultimately and I'll trim a little bit of the fat while we talk. And I've got this uh, pork butt sitting here on a rosewood topper board. This is something we sell at our shop, so I like to do my, my prep on these. That way I can kind of take it away and, and, uh, and just work on my block with the final product when we're done. So let's just trim off these couple, couple big, big hunks here. Actually, that was not too bad. A little bit of this fat on the money muscle. So let's talk about the history of this. How did this come to be? Why did we do it? So I come from the South and we eat pulled pork or we ate pulled pork, uh, you know, as a kid all the time. And when you think pulled pork, you think sweet, um, you know, sweet flavor profile is generally what you have with, with, with pork. So when we make pulled pork, we're using typically our gospel seasoning, our honey hog. Uh, you might be using a sweet barbecue sauce. Um, you know, just like I said, an overall sweet profile. Well, many years ago, friend of ours, Philip, placed at the American Royal. He actually uh, got second place in the pork category, making what he called a Mexican pork butt. And if you know much about the recipe, it wasn't all that Mexican. Uh, basically, he braised it in a like Humex juice, like a fruit juice, so something you find at local Hispanic markets. Um, but it always stuck in our head, and he gave me the recipe years ago. So fast forward to this past year, um, I was talking to another good buddy of mine, Woody, Sean Woodson. If you guys know Woody, Three Woody's Barbecue out of Kennedale, Texas. Woody's a legend. Uh, Woody and I were talking about that recipe and he started sharing with me something that he's done and I thought sounded amazing and that's what we're gonna do right now. So let's flip the script and let's not go sweet. Let's go savory, so completely different. And I think you're gonna find uh, this is it's really going to shock you. It's kind of like if you own a barbecue joint, you don't want to eat ribs. Nobody wants to eat sweet ribs anymore. So people in Texas make salt and pepper ribs as a change of pace. That's what this is going to remind you of. No sweetness in this whatsoever. So first things first, we're going to start with some hot sauce. We're using Cholula hot sauce. You can use whatever you want. We're going to use this as our binder. I'm going to start on the fat side first. And no, I did not trim any fat off the back. I'm keeping the fat cap. So this is, this is a binder, adding a little color, obviously a little bit of flavor as well. So let's get it on all sides. This sucker's slippery. I feel like I'm mud wrestling right now. So just slather that on really good. So look, this would be an alternative to doing what a lot of people in the South do, which is mustard. Look at that, oh yeah. And now we're gonna season very heavily with our Dia de la Fajita. So our fajita seasoning is salt, pepper, onion, garlic, a little bit of citrus. We use it on obviously all things fajita, but we also use this on all of our vegetables. It's a great veg seasoning. So this is kind of an, ends up being an all purpose for me and it can be salty. So typically I say go lighter, but not on this. This is a big old cut of meat. It's gonna be pulled pork ultimately. So honestly, it's gonna be hard to over season it. So go liberal, as they say. Clearly you can use whatever season you want. 
but I'm not going to give you that PC line today. I'm going to tell you this is what this recipe is about. This is what Woody uses. This is what I use. This is what we use in that class in September, and it was a huge hit. Liberal, liberal. Okay, looks pretty good. So obviously you can see this is going to be very different from what you're used to, and it's going to be killer. And there's some more stuff we're going to do to it as we cook it. But first things first, I need to let the seasoning in here. I'm going to let this pork butt sweat out, as they say. So let's give it 10, 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to check on my cooker, and then we'll get to the next step. All right, guys, this is nice and adhered. So let's talk about cooking this. Today we're gonna cook on a Traeger Ironwood 885 with the Meat Church Pellets, great blend of oak and hickory. Um, you obviously can cook this on anything you wanna cook it on. In fact, if you saw our last pulled pork video, we cooked it on an offset, but you gotta love the convenience um, of a Traeger. Maybe if you're busy, got things going on. Um, and plus, you can monitor it remotely if you're away from the house. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's load this bad boy in here. And we're going to be cooking this for probably seven, eight hours. Let me wipe my hand off here. What we're looking for is actually this next step, which I'm about to get out here for you guys. Change my gloves. So I didn't do anything to this one sitting beside it other than just let it ride. I haven't spritzed it or anything. Let me pull this out. One hander here. Ooh, soft underneath and hot. Let's bring this out. So I know because I've already checked this, it's just over 170 or 173. This is the wrap stage of this pork butt. So you've, you know, you've just got this really pretty bark. Now you can see it's not as beautiful mahogany or, you know, kind of bright red from the sweeter stuff we did because you've got that hot sauce on here, you've got the fajita on here, so it's not gonna look as pretty, basically. It's just gonna be a little darker. But get yourself a pan. Oh, it's coming apart. I actually, I usually go in two pans. And let's go to the next step here. So we're going back to our hot sauce. I'm gonna take this glove off now. So let's, let's slather, or let's put a little more of this on here. All over it. And for those of you wondering right now, don't worry, this isn't gonna be blazing hot. I can't handle super hot stuff and I love this. But clearly, you know, put on the amount that you like. This is gonna be great right here. We're gonna add some more seasoning. This is a really common step for me at the wrap stage of pork uh, back when I was competing or if I'm making it at home. Um, I usually will put more seasoning in at this stage. So a little more seasoning. Now we're gonna go with some butter. Also extremely common uh, tip. Something done in competition barbecue. I always say this butter adds richness. Um, lots of butter in barbecue. And you know, I'm gonna go back to old, my old line. I ain't here to help you lose weight. I'm here to help you enjoy life. Oh, this butter's soft. So this is salted butter that I sliced up. Let me get my, uh, let me get my knife out here. Let this butter get a little too soft. Okay. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with a little bit of chicken stock down in the bottom. We're basically gonna braise this. And this is about a half a cup, it's not a whole lot. But again, get away from that sweet profile. This works really, really well. So that's good to go. So let's get her foiled up. Back, in we go. Okay. We're gonna go back in the Traeger. Still running 250 degrees. I can make myself a little more room. 
by grabbing my final product here. So once you're back in the cooker, you're gonna roll this. Let me put my probe back in here. Ooh, that's hot. Put my meat probe right in the middle. There we go. All right, that is hot. Okay, let's get this fat out of here. So what we did here was, this is a foiled version that we cooked. This, is, this has been going about probably two and a half hours more after we foiled it. And this is probe tender, which I'm going to show you. Now the downside to braising, you kind of lose that bark on the top, but I'll show you a tip about that in just a second. But just take your instant read thermometer and there's like no resistance whatsoever. I mean, look how tender that is. That's just crazy. So that's done. And look at all that beautiful liquid right there. We're over 200 degrees, 206. That is more than done. So here's what I'm gonna do. I wanna get that bark back. So I'm actually gonna put this back in the Traeger for 10, 15 minutes to kind of build some of the bark back. Then we're gonna pull it and it's gonna be time to make tacos. All right guys, let's get this pork butt out of the Traeger. The bark's not completely back, but you can see it firmed up a little. You know, you don't have to do that for this in particular, but it's a good lesson just in barbecue in general, uh, especially for those of you that wrap your briskets in foil. Um, it's a way that you could pull the protein out of the foil, put it back in the cooker and kind of build some or gain that bark back. I'm gonna pour out, there's a ton of juice in here. It's gonna be way hot, so be careful with this. Hang on to that. In fact, we're gonna put some in a fat separator. This is your friend when you're making pulled pork. That's how you get it so juicy. Let's pull this butt out of here. Well, this thing's tender. Not only was it probe tender, but braising in that liquid, this thing is whew, tender tender. All right, we got it. And look at that. All right, and it smells really, really, really good. I can smell the hot sauce. I know it's gonna be good. I gotta let this cool off. Uh, let's give it a while. I'm not going for the long rest on this, but I wanna let it rest long enough that I can actually pull it. So I'm probably gonna give it about half an hour sitting here on the block and then we'll be back. All right, it's time to pull the pork and see how we did. Well, you know me, I'm gonna start down here on the money muscle. Cause as my friend Myron Mixon always says, Money muscles, how you get paid. Let's just pull some of that right there. Save some of that. I like to pull some out from by the by the uh, bone. It's still pretty hot. I mean, you should rest it a little bit longer, but I'm trying to be nice to my video crew and not keep keep people here all day. But looks really good. I love that smoke you've got right there. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a little bit of a taste before I do something with it. You could do a lot of things with this, but the first thing you gotta do is see how you did. That, that pork flavor is great. Um, I love the savoriness that I'm picking up from that. But any time that I pull pork, I love that. I'm, I'm like three, four seconds later, I'm feeling the savory, the not normal sweet. It's gonna blow your mind because you're used to this being sweet and that's not what you're gonna get. Anytime I pull pork, I do a couple things. I put some more seasoning in it. Another big competition thing, people put a finishing dust on stuff. So mix some of that in there if you want. And I mentioned to you guys that I put some of the, the jus in a fat separator and you can see that it did its job. Now, that liquid's not just fat, it's also obviously some of the chicken stock and you can see the separation. But what I'll normally do is I'll kind of dredge back through that as well. This is great for pulled pork sandwiches. Anytime you're making pulled pork, if you want to not have to have barbecue sauce, just put some of that back in it. And what you got right there is just super juicy pork. Now, man, that's good. That's insanely good. If you want it hotter, this is when you say, all right, I want a little more hot sauce on it. So here you can, you know, you can kind of deal with your crowd here. You can have some that's not too hot. You can have some that's a little more hot by adding some hot sauce right here. Obviously that's like super 
moist, juicy. Ah, that's good. People that make barbecue all the time don't eat the core meats. Like, you're not gonna find me making pulled pork all the time. You're not gonna be find me making brisket for my family all the time. But that's a great change of pace that I would love. But here's my preferred way to eat this. Now, got some fresh flour tortillas that were made this morning. Clearly you could do this on a bun. You can make a pulled pork sandwich. You can do whatever the heck you wanna do. But if we're gonna call this Mexican pulled pork, then my God, we're gonna make a taco. I got a little bit of red onion. You could also do white. A little cilantro. A little cotija, a little more cotija cheese. And I got a, I got a creamy hot sauce out of Austin I like called Blue Top. This is lime jalapeno. We also have an amazing pico recipe on meatchurch.com. All of our recipes are on meatchurch.com, but the pico would be great on it. You know, kind of top it with, with, with whatever you want. Got to have a little squeeze of lime in there. Look at that. Well, let's see how y'all think it's going to be. Ooh, looks good. That's the biggest bite I've ever taken on camera. I'm in love with this. The salt, pepper, onion, garlic seasoning uh, on the pork butt. The uh, hot sauce really comes through with that. It's just such a contrast to pork that I grew up on. I know I've said that several times, but it's so different, so enjoyable. This will be great for the typical Taco Tuesday or whatever you want to do with it. And I always say to end with great product, you got to start with great product. The Prairie Fresh Pork Butt's amazing pork before you do anything to it. Traeger with the pellets ran like a dream and made this cook super easy for me so I could live my busy life. If you guys like what we're doing, please like and subscribe to our channel. As always, you can find all of our recipes at meatchurch.com. See you all next time.